Blackmagic is changing how we think about low budget cameras. With powerful features and footage quality you typically only see in high end cinema cameras. One of those features, dual ISO, will change your post production and the way you think when filming. But what is dual ISO and how does it affect dynamic range in the BMP CC 4K? Find out in 180 seconds. So what is dual native ISO? It's a great question. PremiumB.com has a great example of how ISO works inside a camera. They say that we should think of ISO like a volume knob on a guitar amp. ISO basically changes the amount of gain being applied to a signal created by light hitting a sensor in the camera. We are not going to go super into detail about how exactly ISO works, but if you're interested in going further into detail on the subject, check out Filmmaker IQ's video that goes deep into image sensors and the signal flow of ISO. I added this link to the description below. Dual ISO basically gives you a secondary baseline to choose from when adjusting the exposure of your camera. In the case of the BMP CC 4K, your native ISO is set at 400 and 3200. The first ISO system will go from 100 to 1000 ISO before kicking in the second ISO system at 1250 ISO. So what exactly does this do? Typically you want to keep your ISO lower to avoid added noise, but with dual ISO you can actually degrade your footage if you record at a lower ISO. Changing between the two systems of ISO affects your dynamic range. Here is a chart from the BMP CC 4K's manual that shows the difference in dynamic range between the native 400 ISO system and the native 3200 ISO system. When changing ISO levels, you are essentially changing the amount of light your camera detects as middle gray. Middle gray is basically just the midway point between black and white to the human eye. Middle gray reflects light back at about 18% and has been the one constant that photographers have based their exposure on and what modern cameras base their exposure levels on. <laughs> there is a lot of debate on this subject and I'm really not going to go into depth on the nuances of middle gray and what all it means. But if you want to go into depth, check out DIY Photography's article link below. When changing between your dual ISO systems, you are basically changing how many stops of dynamic range you can capture lower or higher than middle gray on each ISO setting. Dynamic range is basically the difference between the darkest and lightest tones in an image. So how does this apply to our ISO levels? Let's look at some footage to give you some examples. When looking at the chart, we can see that 125 ISO only has 3.8 stops of dynamic range above middle gray versus 1000 ISO that has 6.8 above middle gray. That means in bright lighting environments, setting your ISO to 1000 will actually give you more detail in brightly lit environments. Now let's stop here and talk about the actual recommended settings for ISO. While I tend to really play around with the ISO settings on these cameras, you really want to stay on your native ISO, 400 and 3200 for less noise in your footage. While at 1000 ISO, you do get great dynamic range in the highlights, but you really get a lot of noise introduced into your footage. Here's a good example of a clip I shot at Yellowstone National Park. I set my camera to 1000 ISO so I could really capture as much detail from the sun in the shot. While the highlights look great, you will notice on the shadows of the subject in the shot that there was a lot of noise introduced in the shadows. While in this example, it is a fairly simple fix in post-production to remove some of that noise, and I was already expecting some of that noise to be introduced in the footage based on what I was shooting. But if you're not careful in certain situations, it can ruin your footage. Be prepared to have to filter out noise from your footage when you're shooting farther away from your native ISO settings, like a normal camera. But as always, experiment with the ISO settings in various situations and see what it can handle. Because while we can sit here and talk about technical aspects of the camera and what it means, you really get the most experience while shooting with the camera and adjusting to what it does. Don't get me wrong, understanding dual ISO and how it works in the camera is crucial to getting the most out of this camera. But you have to test it in real life situations and push the boundaries of what it can handle. When you figure out those boundaries, you'll be able to problem solve on the spot and produce better results in tricky shooting situations. By the way, did I mention Blackmagic also has a great feature for changing your ISO in post-production? A unique feature in post-production is that you can actually change your camera's ISO settings in post. If you film within the native 400 ISO system, you can change your ISO from a range of 100 to 1000, and if your ISO is set above 1000, you can change your ISO from 1250 all the way up to 25,000. This can be a lifesaver in post-production if you are shooting run and gun and are quickly adjusting your levels as you go. 
And that is how dual ISO works and how it affects the dynamic range of the BMP CC4K. Thank you for watching today's episode. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Until next time, this is John Owens with Frame Voyager.